What is up everybody, this is your guy Kalai, and welcome back to Budget Buys. And today, I'm going to be taking a look at the Booga LED Gaming Mouse 2, which is the latest piece of Booga gaming gear from Five Below. And as the name suggests, it's a follow-up to the Booga LED Gaming Mouse. And it's also a very awkward name to say. Personally, I would have said something like the Booga LED Honeycomb Mouse, or the LED Honeycomb Gaming Mouse, or because that's also a mouthful, albeit less awkward than calling it the LED Gaming Mouse 2, you could have gone with the LED Hex Gaming Mouse. But either way, it's here and... Not gonna lie, I'm kind of excited for it. Not because I think it's going to be an amazing mouse, but because not only does this show that Five Below is still doing Gaming Gear stealth releases like they did with the half gaming keyboard, but they're also paying attention to trends, even if they are a little late to the Honeycomb Mouse Party. Who knows, maybe they actually will end up jumping onto the 60% keyboard bandwagon. Also, for those of you wondering where the reviews for all of the other recently released Booga gaming gear is, I kind of got sidetracked designing my own custom keyboard switch puller thanks to all of the switch reviews that I've been working on, and that took over my life for a couple of weeks. But don't worry, the prototype is finished and I will be making a video about how you can make your own in the not too distant future. I've already started working on it. Back on the topic of mice, let's go ahead and turn these boxes over and compare the features between the two. And you've probably noticed that there are some significant differences here. First off is the fact that while the original Booga Mouse is a seven key USB gaming mouse, the LED Mouse 2 is an eight key LED gaming mouse. And you'll see it later on why they really should not have put so much emphasis on the eighth button. The other major difference between these two mice outside of the shell design is the fact that the original Booga Gaming Mouse has five DPI settings starting at 1200 DPI and going all the way up to 7200 DPI, whereas the LED Gaming Mouse 2 has only four DPI settings starting off at 400 DPI and maxing out at 2400 DPI. And I'm kind of on the fence on whether or not this is a bad thing, because yes, this mouse has a much higher DPI setting, but the lowest is still 1200 DPI, and that's kind of the average for a lot of mice that don't have adjustable DPI. So you're going to be going from average mouse usage to holy crap that's fast with a few steps in between, but nothing lower. Whereas the LED Mouse 2 not only gives you the 1200 DPI, which seems to be the average, but slightly faster, but more importantly, significantly slower. And this is what you're going to want in games where you need fine control and pixel perfect clicking. I know that if I'm playing a game where I'm using something like a sniper rifle, or I'm playing one of my guilty pleasure hidden object games where the hitboxes can sometimes be very specific on the items I'm looking for, I tend to drop the DPI settings on my mouse. You can't do that here, but you can here. And to be perfectly honest with you, I kind of hate that I'm giving points to this one, despite the fact that it has an overall lower DPI sensor, but there you go. Also, both of these mice say they have a 500 hertz polling rate, and they do. I tested it and they work perfectly fine in that respect. Now, before I go any further, I do want to say that, surprisingly, this mouse does not come with a Booga collector's card, just like the Bluetooth gaming speaker that I reviewed previously. And that kind of caught me by surprise, because while the half gaming keyboard did come with a collector's card, that just so happened to work as a standalone as opposed to being part of the previous seven piece set. So far, the only piece of the new collection that came with a collector's card was the blue gaming headset and most likely the red gaming headset, which I admittedly did not buy. Of course, it's just the same collector's card that came with the original black gaming headset, but still, it came with a card due to the fact that it seems to be working as a replacement 
for a piece of the original set, and I would argue that this mouse is doing the same with the original mouse. And back to comparing the mice. And there are definitely quite a few differences here. Though, also a few similarities. Both of these mice have a braided cable that comes in at a length of 59 inches or 150 centimeters. They also have a pair of side buttons, which are typically used for going forward and back in your web browser, though in your game of choice, you can assign these to whatever command you'd like. Next up, you have the DPI adjustment buttons, which allow you to increase and decrease your mouse's DPI based on the settings that are built in. Last but not least, both mice have a metal plate on the bottom, with the one on the LED Mouse 2 being significantly larger than the one on the original LED Mouse. As for the eighth button on the LED Mouse 2, that is hidden right over here, and that allows you to control the intensity of the LEDs built into the mouse. More on that later. Because I wanna go back and talk about these metal plates because this is kind of counterintuitive. In my review of the original LED mouse, I said that this plate might serve the purpose of making your weight adjustable so that you can make the mouse heavier or lighter whenever you'd like. Though ultimately, it's more than likely there in order to give the mouse some heft and imply value, as well as allow the manufacturer to put their information on the bottom of the mouse by laser engraving it. Though at the same time, they could just use a sticker like most other manufacturers. Go figure. However, in the case of the LED Mouse 2, this plate should not be there. Yes, it's still going to add heft to the mouse in order to imply value, but the whole point of a honeycomb mouse is to reduce weight, and therefore adding the metal plate defeats the point. Also, while I understand it being there for aesthetic reasons, the light diffuser inside should also not be there. Instead, it should do something more like this. This is the LTC WHM01, aka the Mosh Pit, which I'll be reviewing in depth at a later date. And as you can see when I take off the back here, yay magnets, it's pretty hollow which goes with the whole weight reduction theme of a honeycomb mouse. Of course, another reason they probably included the light diffuser is to add structural stability to the mouse, though at the same time, the plastic is not that flexible. Unlike the Yuyusei gaming mouse from Five Below that I reviewed a couple years ago. Also, I still, I can't get over the plastic scroll wheel. This thing is terrible. I am so glad this one's rubberized. Now, after all of that ranting about weight, it's only fair that I actually hold a weigh-in. And we're going to start with the base plates, because like I said, it does feel like the LED Mouse 2's base plate is heavier than the original LED Mouse. So, the base plate for the original LED Mouse comes in at 10.4 grams, or 0.365 ounces. The base plate for the LED Mouse 2 is 11.3 grams, so nearly an entire gram heavier, or a flat 0.4 ounces. And while those weights don't sound like a lot, keep in mind that there are mice out there that allow you to customize their weight. Here's the weight tray from an old Logitech G5, and some of the weights are as low as 1.7 grams so it is definitely more significant than it sounds. Now for the LED Mouse 2 without the weight plate. Let's get the cable out of the way so it doesn't affect things. It really is stiff enough to lift it. Without the weight plate, it is 75.9 grams or 2.675 ounces. And with the weight plate, it is 89.3 grams or 3.15 ounces. The original Booga Mouse Sans weight plate is 85.7 grams or 3.025 ounces. And with the weight plate, it is 94 grams or 3.325 ounces. Also, because I just have to know, the UU Say Gaming Mouse is around 51, 52 grams. We're waiting for the scale to stop going up thanks to the cable settling or 1.920 ounces. 
this thing is close to half the weight of the Booga Mice. So if you really want a lighter mouse than the original Booga Mouse, use this one, as long as you don't mind having a dumpster fire for a scroll wheel. Next up, let's talk about how these feel gliding on a mouse pad. And for that, I decided to change things up to the gray mouse pad from Five Below because, as I mentioned in my review of the Rock Hat Cone XP, the green mouse pad I typically use is terrible for this kind of thing. Mainly because I can't find a lime green desk mat anywhere, and I had to coat a white one in fabric paint to get the effect I wanted. Fortunately, my channel has a secondary color in the color scheme, that being gray, so it all works out in the end. And overall, they feel pretty similar. They're not as slippy as the Cone XP because I doubt they're using Teflon on the glides here, but they still do a decent job at reducing friction. Also, I don't know if it's psychosomatic or not, but I definitely feel the weight difference between the two mice. Though that could also have to do with weight distribution as opposed to just the difference in weight because the original LED gaming mouse is narrower and as such it is focusing a lot of the weight in this direction whereas the LED mouse 2 is wider at the base as you can see and it spreads things out a little bit better. But at the same time it is kind of fat in the hand. I do much prefer the feel of the original gaming mouse. Next up are the LEDs, and just like on the original LED gaming mouse, has things set up so that the LEDs in different zones on the mouse aren't all the same color at the same time. And you know what, that's kind of smart. By setting it up that way from the start, you don't have to really worry about LED desync. And jump cut, because I just tested to see if adjusting the DPI on both of these mice is going to change the color of the LEDs, and if I'm not mistaken, some people said that was a feature in the comment section of my review of the original LED gaming mouse. That doesn't actually seem to be the case, because if I just hit the buttons here, you will see a little bit of a flash, but at the same time, Things are still cycling, so you're just restarting the color changing circuit and then things go back to normal. Also, if you want to see a low light shot of these two mice side by side, here you go. Last but not least, let's talk about button number 8 over here. Because as I previously mentioned, this controls the intensity of the LEDs. And if I just hit it once, things get significantly dimmer. And here is the low light shot to compare them. And if I hit it one more time, the LEDs turn off. Though you still can occasionally see the red sensor light coming through the honeycomb. Once again, here's a low light shot. I really like the fact that that feature was included due to the fact that I've been wanting to turn off the LEDs on pretty much every other single piece of Booga gaming tech that I've reviewed thus far. And while technically you can do that with the headsets by just not plugging in the USB cable, the same cannot be said about any of the other accessories if you want to get the full functionality out of them. And out of all of the accessories that could really use this feature, the LED gaming microphone has to be the top of the list because it turns out the squeal that I've complained about not only in that video, but also several others is caused by the LEDs. And while I theorize that due to the fact that the squeal does kind of synchronize with the flash of the LEDs, somebody in the comment section of that video mentioned that they actually took the microphone apart and detached the LEDs and the squeal went away. Now, if only there was a way to fix the baked in low audio quality, that microphone wouldn't be half bad. One last thing I wanna talk about before I wrap things up is the texture on these mice. Because I've had a lot of comments on my review for the original LED gaming mouse asking if it was possible to drag click with it. And I thought I might as well include that information here. Of course, I am by no means an expert on drag clicking. 
seeing as how I've never successfully done it before, though that is mainly because I don't play any games that would benefit from that. But for those of you who do understand what is necessary for drag clicking, I will go ahead and say that while both of these mice do have a matte texture on the buttons, it's still quite slick. What I'm noticing here is that the matte texture is not so much from the way it was molded, but instead it feels like there might actually be a coating on top of the mouse buttons, and the same is true for the LED mouse too. This feels pretty much identical, though on the LED Gaming Mouse 2, it has a top curve, while on the original LED Gaming Mouse, it actually swoops downward. So I don't know which one of those is actually ideal for drag clicking, or if you can even do that with the type of texture that these have, but maybe someone who's managed to master that technique can let us know down in the comments. And there you have the Booga LED Gaming Mouse 2, a little $10 honeycomb gaming mouse. And while as of the recording of this video, I couldn't find this in any of my local stores and therefore had to order it on the website, who knows, maybe some of you can find it in your locals. Also, I should go ahead and say that if you do plan on buying this on the Five Below website, verify that you are buying the correct mouse because last time I checked, Half of the images for this particular mouse are actually of this mouse, including the main image for that listing. So make sure the item that you're purchasing is listed as the eight button mouse, not the seven button mouse. Also just scroll through the images and after one or two, you should eventually get to the correct images. This was such a stealth release that I don't even think their webmaster knew it was coming. Now as for what I think of the mouse, it's okay. It's not the greatest. It definitely doesn't do the things that you would expect from a honeycomb mouse, i.e. weight reduction, but it's okay. And I gotta admit, I do somewhat have a weakness for honeycomb mice these days, and it is nice to see one from Five Below. Now, because this video has definitely gone on longer than I originally planned, I'm gonna go ahead and say, until next time, this is your guy, Cly signing off.